We present Vincent Price and Coral Brown in Night of the Wolf, a horror legend of man and beast by Victor Pemberton. Night of the Wolf. Deacon. Yes. Ah. Ah. Uh, forgive me for disturbing you in your moment of prayer, sir. I am Sir Richard Burnett, provost of this college. Uh, the Porter's Lodge said I would find you here. Yes. The chapel is beautiful, isn't it? In a few years' time, we'll be entering the 20th century and think that... I did not come all this way to Cambridge to talk about King's College Chapel, Sir Richard. Now, where is my son? Mr. Deacon, surely we've been through all that? Only by mail. It's been six months since you first wrote to me. And I am not convinced. Now I'm here. I want to know what happened to him. But you must know. If I did, I wouldn't have crossed the Atlantic Ocean. But the police. The police! Have... Let me tell you something, sir. Where I come from, the police may be what you might call a little thick headed. But if they really want to find someone, they don't give up without trying. Your son is dead, Mr. Deacon. He took his own life. I refuse to believe it. I know it is hard to accept. I only accept fact, Sir Richard. Fact. There was the note. Then why hasn't the body ever been found? Because no one has known where to look. Mr. Deacon, you're a judge. I surely you understand. Students, suicide, the boy just disappeared from his room. But you mean to say that no one saw him leave the university? It was the middle of the night. What about his friends? I suppose he is closest friend was Edward Griffin. He and Robert shared rooms together. Yes, and outside the university. I wrote to you no one, except, ah, yes, except there were the Northcutts. The Northcutts? You never mentioned them? No, no, ah. Well, there is a daughter, an, uh, an attractive girl, but, um, look, Mr. Deacon, I can assure you, the police have pursued every possible line of inquiry. Sir Richard, do you believe my son is dead? Until we can prove to the contrary, yes. Then perhaps you had better read this. What is it? Well, it's a note. It was delivered to me in my lodgings soon after I arrived in Cambridge last night. As you can see, it's in my son's own handwriting. And it's dated yesterday, March 9th. 1883. What? Go ahead, read it. Help me, Papa. For the love of God, help me. Now, is that a voice from the dead, Sir Richard? A hoax. Well, it, it must be a hoax. Now, what could it possibly mean? It means that my son needs me. And if I have to tear down this university brick by brick, stone by stone, I swear to you, I am going to find him. Who are you? What do you want? Look, if it's money you're after, he... I mean you no harm, sir. I'm a friend of your son, Robert. There are things I must tell you, Mr. Deacon. Who are you? My name is Edward Griffin, sir. Griffin. Robert and I were as close as friends could be. Yes. That's why I'm as desperate as you to know what has happened to him. Young man, are you trying to tell me you, you have reason to believe that my son is still alive? Alive or dead, sir, I am convinced that Robert would never take his own life. If you know what has happened to my son, Mr. Griffin, then, then you must tell me everything you know. First, I must have your word that whatever is said between us will not be revealed to any other living person. No, you have my word, sir. But... What happened to Robert? That, 
that night he disappeared. What was he so afraid of? Does the name Dorothy Northcote mean anything to you? Northcote, yes, vaguely. Well, Robert was in love with her. She had flaming red hair that falls down to her waist like a scarlet waterfall. And her eyes. She had such a wild look in her eyes. It's so unusual for a young man to be infatuated with a beautiful girl. And... Robert's love for Dorothy Northcote was more than infatuation, Mr. Deacon. It was a need. We first met her at the college May Ball. I don't know where she came from or even how she got there. But Robert somehow noticed her the moment she entered the hall. When she saw him, she began to mock him with her eyes. It was as though they had made some kind of contact without the need for words. From then on, Robert saw her practically every day. He became restless and tormented every moment he was parted from her. His whole being seemed to change. He even started to quarrel with me, something he'd never done before. He began to react to me and everyone else around him was some kind of a threat. He was consumed with hate. One night, I decided to follow Robert here to this bridge. From the shadows down there by the river, it was only his reflection I could see shimmering by moonlight into the water. But there was no mistaking Dorothy's voice. Why, Robert, I do believe you are staring at me. What is it, my dearest? What are you trying to say to me? I, I can't live my life without you, Dorothy. You're such a part of me now. My past, present, and future. <laughs> Take me away with you, Dorothy. I, I beg you to take me away. <laughs> Don't you understand? I, I couldn't bear for you to leave me alone. <laughs> oh, but you will not be alone, my dearest. Never again. No one can part us now, Robert. No one. You are my soul. I am your creation. Shh. Look down into the water, Robert. What do you see? Darkness. Only darkness. No, Robert, there is no darkness in the sky. Only light. The moon will protect you, my dearest. Protect you. Nothing exists. The world doesn't exist. Only you and me. Hmm. A cloud. I see. I can I can see a huge black cloud. It's all around me. I, I can't breathe. Tell me, Robert, tell me. There, there's something there, coming out of the cloud. Two faces. They look so alike, and yet... Oh, no! Oh, take them away from me! Take them away! Look at the face. I command you to look at the face. What do you see, Robert? What do you see? Oh, oh. gives me strength. Your strength. Yes. Yes. I will follow you to the ends of the earth. And so you shall, my dearest. And so you shall. Take my hands, Robert. Hold them against your face. <gasps> Ooh. So cold, like ice. Kiss them, Robert. Kiss the hands that will create you. Ah! Ah! Oh, my face! My face! Ah! ah! Her fingernails tore into the flesh of his face almost to the bone. When I caught up with him later, blood was still streaming down his collar. Mr. Griffin, have you ever told any of this to the police? No, sir. Why not? I just felt that anything I told them wouldn't make sense. It all seemed so absurd, so unreal. Maybe it is unreal. Maybe what we're dealing with here are forces that are beyond law. But the first thing I want to do is to find that girl. Where does she come from? She lives in the manor of Northcote. It's an old family house deep in marshland up in the Finn country. Now you just tell me how to get there and I'll leave first thing in the morning. Then I must warn you to take care, sir. For the Northcutts are a hostile, arrogant family who have chosen to live their lives in total isolation. Your visit may not be welcome. I'm not afraid, Mr. Griffin. If there's someone in that house who knows what happened to my son, then it'll take more than arrogance to keep me from him. Then you must promise me, sir, that if ever you're in danger, 
You'll call him my old friend, Professor Daniel Forrester. Daniel Forrester. He's an anthropologist who lives in the village of Northcote itself. Daniel Forrester. Yes. It's how I remember that name. Mr. Griffin, let me shake your hand. I know that Robert will be as grateful as I am for what you have done. Mr. Deacon, do you believe in the power of evil? I accept that there is such a thing as evil, but what concerns me most is the nature of it. As a man of faith, I, I guess I prefer to believe in the power of God. Then may God go with you to the manor of Northcote, sir, for I fear you may have need of him. Who's there? Hello? Is anyone there? <laughs> Where am I? I? I can't see a thing in this... this... this mist. There's so little air. Who's there? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? What? Oh, my hand. Something touched my hand. Help us, please. Help us. What? Where are you? Keep, keep away from me. Keep away. I can't. I can't see you. Who's this? Keep away. You, what, was, what was that? What was that? A dog? Dog? Oh no, my God. It's, it's not a dog. Oh no. No! Help me, someone! Help me! Leave me alone! 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 Mr. Deacon. Uh, Mr. Matthew Deacon. <laughs> Who? Who are you? I am Nicholas Northcott. Come to the house, please. My grandmother is expecting you. Why have you come here, Mr. Deacon? Well, no, ma'am, it, it seems my visit was not entirely unexpected. Oh, not at all. I heard you were staying in the village. It's common knowledge you are trying to find your way out here. I'd like to know why. I'm looking for my son, Mrs. Northcott. Where is he? Your son I don't understand I have information that this house is the last place he came to before he disappeared from Cambridge University oh oh yes the the student boy oh, the police did come here to make certain inquiries about him but but you are misinformed sir I do not know your son if you'd taken the trouble to write to me in advance, you could have saved yourself a pointless journey. Then perhaps you'll allow me to ask the same question of your granddaughter. Where is she, Mrs. Northcote? Where is Dorothy? Oh, Dorothy is not here. She's away visiting a sick relative in France. Are you aware that she is the last person to be seen with Robert? She was my son's constant companion. Mr. Deacon, there are many who would consider my granddaughter to be a somewhat beautiful child. It is not unusual for young men to be attracted to her. These two young people were in love, Mrs. Northcote. In love? Oh, now, Dorothy's been in love many times, but with no one but herself. You're wasting your time, sir. You have my word that, to my knowledge, your son has never been to this house. Well, then perhaps you will tell me why. On the first day after he disappeared, my son was, was seen arriving with your granddaughter at the village railroad station. Hmm? Now, are you going to let me talk to that girl? Or do I have to find out what I want to know from the village? The villagers despise this family, Mr. Deacon. They have always despised us. And they do anything to blacken our name. I cannot allow you to be subjected to their pernicious gossip. For the time, it's better you stay here. I'll send to the village for your belongings. You're inviting me to... to stay here, in the manor house? Oh, why not? There's nothing to be afraid of, is there? That, ma'am, is what I'm here to find out. 
Fear is a condition of the mind, Nicholas. I suppose you could call it an emotion. A dread of something you hope will never happen. <laughs> now, you take me, for instance. There are a lot of things I fear. Most of all, death. You mean you're afraid to die? Oh, no. No, but I'm afraid of taking life. That's quite different, you know. Have you ever taken a life, Mr. Yes. Deacon? Yes, Miss Sybil, I... I'm afraid I have. But then if you believe in justice as I do, you come to realize that there are some crimes that just have to be punished, whatever the cost. You have actually sent men to the gallows? Yes. And you have no conscience about it? Oh, on the contrary. My, my dreams are plagued by the prospect of taking a life that the good Lord has created. But society has the right to be protected from the powers of evil. I... I guess it's the same in your country as well as our own. What part of the United States of America do you come from, Mr. Deacon? Pennsylvania, ma'am. Pennsylvania? Yes. Is that a town? Oh, no, Miss Sybil. I, I doubt if you ever heard of my hometown. In fact, you probably couldn't even find it on the map, but I tell you, I, I think about it. I think about it an awful lot. Especially when the lilacs are in bloom. <laughs> and what about the war, Mr. Deacon? Did you have to fight for your state of the Pennsylvania in the American Civil War? Oh, yes, Nicholas. I had to fight. So did a lot of other men. They had to fight and die. Some of them were not even as old as you. Scrubbed faces, half-grown bristles. Nothing more than boys stepping into men's boots. You see... To us, the enemy was just a different colored uniform, that's all. We shared the same blood, we had the same hopes. I never did understand why I was asked to kill a man when I didn't even know the color of his eyes. But <laughs> then if you're a man like the late President Lincoln, I guess you'd be willing to sacrifice anything, even, even your own life, if it's for something you really believe in. Tell me something. Uh, how do you manage to run a house like this without servants? Servants? Yeah. <laughs> Even if you get them to come out here, I can assure you they'd never stay. Oh, why not? Because it would intrude upon my grandmother's privacy. Nicholas, what my grandson is trying to say, Mr. Deacon, <laughs> is that the Northcutts have lived in this house since it was first built. We have always valued our seclusion. Superstition. That's what keeps them away. They know what this house is and all it stands for. Either be silent or leave my table, sir. I do so hate being alone. I like to have fun, to be able to talk to people. This house has become so depressing. Now, don't be ridiculous, Sybil. But it's true, Mama. We're so far from the village, no one ever comes to see us. Well, now, Miss Sybil, you, you really don't make it too easy for people, do you? And surrounding yourself with wild dogs and here in the middle of the marshland. It's not only that, Mr. Deacon. Ever since Dorothy has gone, this house has been like a grave. Oh? Well, uh, when does Dorothy get back from France? France? I don't follow you, sir. Some wine, Mr. Deacon. No. No, thank you, ma'am. This is Northcote. Why did my coach driver make me walk the last part of the journey up to this house? What did he mean when he said it's not safe for anyone to be out on the marshes after sunset? Well, as my grandson told you, Mr. Deacon, the villagers harbor certain superstitions about these marshes. You know, they believe they're haunted by the many victims who've perished there. You're lucky to have survived your journey here at all, Mr. Deacon. A few steps either side of that road, and you'd have found yourself in mud bogs more than 12 feet deep. From what I heard out there in the mist, it was not only the mud I had to fear. What do you mean? Young man, I've lived in the backwoods of my own country long enough to know the difference between the howling of a wild dog and the call of a wolf. <laughs> but you're mistaken, sir. The wolf is a creature that has been extinct in this part of England for centuries. Then the question is all the more challenging, ma'am. I heard a wolf. Nicholas, it's past eight o'clock. Both the house doors. I haven't finished my wine. The doors, please. Oh, very well. Uh, uh, if 
You'll excuse me. I have things to do in the kitchen. Good night, Mr. Deacon. Oh, good night, Miss Sybil. Mrs. Northcott, what are you all trying to hide from me? Hide? I don't know what you're talking about. If Robert and Dorothy were seen together, then I want to know where they went. I cannot tell you, because I simply do not but know. Dorothy must have talked about the boy. Dorothy never so much as mentioned your son's name to me. He can't even be sure that they ever met. But then why won't you let me ask her for myself? How many times must I tell you, sir? My granddaughter is not here. Sooner or later, you're going to have to accept the fact that your son is dead. Why, even the police have concluded their investigation. Mrs. Northcott, I refuse to believe that my son is dead. Now, I don't know what went on between these two young people, but I promise you, I will never rest until someone tells me the truth. Then I pity you, sir. For in the journey to truth, there can only be pain. Mr. Deacon? <laughs> Mr. Deacon? Oh, Miss Sybil. Well, isn't it late for you to be up? I had to see you, Mr. Deacon. I had to talk to you. There are so many things you should know. What are you talking about? Dorothy loved him, you know. She really did love your son. So he was here. Miss Sybil, why is your mother trying to keep it from no, you? No, you mustn't blame Mama. She has to be strong to protect us. Now, you listen to me. What has happened to my son? Where is Dorothy? They used to come here, to the long gallery. It was the only place they thought they could be alone. But they were wrong. There are eyes watching us all the time, listening to everything we say. You came here to tell me something, Sybil. What is it? Dorothy. Yes, where is Dorothy? She is such a beautiful child. Oh, so alive, Mr. Deacon, so alive. Oh, it's cold. Oh, will this house Here, never be warm? Take my jacket. No. Would you catch a chill? I must go now. No, no. If Mama knew I were oh, here to No, Miss Sybil, don't go. Not yet. Tell, tell me about, about this gallery, the portraits around the walls. Who are they? They're my ancestors, aunts, uncles, cousins, great grandparents. They're all here. Hold the lamp higher. Do you see how the light brings them to life? Do you see how they mock at us? It's the most extraordinary collection of paintings that I've, I've ever seen. Their features, they're all, all identical. The same color hair, the same fixed expression, and yet, yet it's something more. You can almost feel their hostility. And over here, this, this vast portrait. What kind of a man is this? Oh, do not mock at him, sir. Do not mock at John Northcote. It is he who first built this house, nearly 300 years ago. A house he has never left. Look at it. The most unnatural, the most grotesque features I've ever seen created by an artist long red hair down to his shoulders and the same fixed expression just like all the others as though he is staring straight out at us it is a portrait that was undertaken after the death of john northcote it is the face of a dead man oh, no. what why have you blown out the lamp there is no need for light the moon See how the moon strikes down through the window to his eyes. Look closely at the eyes, Mr. Deacon. A wild look. Cold, demanding. And his hands. Look at his hands like claws. He will eat your soul. He will eat your soul. The wolf! Sybil! Mama! The next time you disobey my instructions, madam, your door will be locked from the outside. Do you understand? Yes, Mama. Then go to your room. Yes, Mama. 
Don't bother to lie to me anymore, Mrs. Northcote. My son was here. Your daughter has told me all that I want to know. My daughter has been a widow too long, Mr. Deacon. It has affected her mind. I must ask you to accept whatever she has told you with the contempt it deserves. Good night, sir. March 12th, 1883. Northcote Manor is a house of dark shadows. Its grey stone walls tower over the marshlands like a monument to the devil himself. Doors are bolted, and there are iron bars at every window. Plates of raw meat are left outside the house to feed the wild dogs who roam in the night. What secrets are they keeping from me? Everywhere I go, I seem to be a prisoner. Every room is alive with whispers, and I feel an atmosphere of such hostility that I now suspect even my own shadow. And yet, there is something more. Is it the cry of the wolf that is trying to tell me that Robert was here? For I feel the boy's presence everywhere, as though he is sitting beside me now. If Robert still exists in living form, which I begin to doubt, then I fear for his sanity. Yes, who is it? Oh, Nicholas. Is anything wrong? I saw the light under your door. I thought you might care to join me in a glass of brandy. Oh, no, thank you. No, I, I don't drink. Ah, a man of principle. Oh, not at all. No, I just don't like it. I envy you, sir. Alcohol is my only release from this house. Ah, so you keep a diary? Yes, I was just completing my entry for the day. You record everything that's happened to you during the course of a day. And I do my best. Why? Well, I suppose you could say that a man who spends most of his time in a court of law has a need to write down the things that he's, <laughs> well, likely to forget. Hmm. I doubt you will ever forget what you see in Northcott Manor, Mr. Deacon. Don't stare at me like that, sir. Well, I'm sorry. I, <laughs> I, I guess it's just that I'm fascinated by the family resemblance. Your mother showed me the portraits in the long gallery. My mother is I... mad, quite mad. There is madness in all of us here. Did you know that, Mr. Deacon? What is it in this house that you're all afraid of, Nicholas? Something that you're too afraid to admit, even to yourselves? I... I don't know what you're talking about. Where is my son, Nicholas? I don't know, I tell you. Why is it necessary to have iron bars up at the windows, Nicholas? Is it to stop something from getting in? Or to prevent someone from getting out? Ask my grandmother. She is the only one who answers questions in this house. Who are the intruders you fear so much, Nicholas? Why won't you tell me? The only intruders on these marshes are we who live here. It is the dead who watch over Northcott Manor. They watch and despise. I have heard it said that to hear the call of a wolf is to hear the call to one's own death. I don't believe in superstitions, Nicholas. I only believe in what I know exists. It's the first night of the full moon. I would advise you to keep the curtains drawn, sir. The light will disturb your sleep. Are you a man of faith, Mr. Deacon? When you get to be my age, you, you realize faith is one of the things you can't live without. And it wasn't until tonight that I knew my son felt the same way. What do you mean? I found this, this copy of the Bible at the side of my bed. Shall I read you what it says on the inside cover? To my dear son Robert, from your loving father, April 4th, 1870. I gave this to Robert on his fifth birthday. If you change your mind about that brandy, I'll be downstairs in front of the fire. Are you so afraid to sleep, Nicholas? Northcott Manor is not a place for sleep, Mr. Deacon. It never has been. Robert, mm. don't 
Don't ever be afraid. God will protect you. God? Don't talk to me of God. If you want to go to your church, then go, Papa. But as long as I live, I'll never go into such a place again. It's only natural that you should feel the boy's presence so strongly in a place like this. Why, I've often seen him in here alone, kneeling in prayer. The wolf is a creature that has been extinct in this part of England for centuries. You will eat your soul, Mr. Deacon. You will eat your soul. 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 The love of God. Help me! Robert! Harry! You must be getting old, Matthew. It's only a nightmare, you know. Only a nightmare. What's going on? Who's there? Who is it? <laughs> Who are you? What do you, what do you want? What do you My, my hand. <laughs> Something touched my hand. I, I, I can't, I can't see anything. It's, it's so dark. I must get to the, to the door. Who are you? Who are you? Where, where are you? I can't see. What do you want of me? Oh, no. Oh, no, no. Get away from me. Get away from me! Uh, uh, oh, my... My hands! Hands! Digging into my face! Oh, no. No, the, the door. It's locked. Let me out. Somebody let me out! gone and yet the pressure I can I can still feel the pressure the window there's something at the window balcony outside who is it who's out there who's out there I say oh my god ah! help me Somebody help me! Nicholas! Nicholas! Nicholas, where are you? Oh, Nicholas! Sybil! What on earth do you think you're doing out here? Now get back into the house at once, madam. But Nicholas! He's out here somewhere, Mama. I saw him from my bedroom window. You stupid girl. How many times must I tell you not to talk of such things? But it has broken loose, Mama. Didn't you hear? He tried to get into the house. Be quiet, I say. You know what it came for, Mama. You know. Yes, Miss Sybil. What did the creature come for? Oh. Was it for me? Was I to be its prey? And why was it only your voice that sent that creature racing off into the marshes like a, like a bewildered rabbit? Mr. Deacon. If you are to remain a guest in my house, you will have the courtesy to respect my wishes. During the hours of darkness, it is unsafe for you to step outside the house unattended. Believe me, I tell you this only for your protection. And is that why you locked me in my room, ma'am? Was that for my own protection? You are mistaken, sir. I did not lock you into your room. Well, then why did I have to break down the door to get out? Take a look at that window of mine up there, Mrs. Northcote. Tell me what kind of an animal is it that has the strength to tear down iron bars as though they were made out of matchwood? <laughs> what I saw up there in the dark was neither man nor beast. It was of a shape and size so unnatural. The blood in my veins turned to ice. Mr. Deacon, your life was never in danger. My gamekeeper, Mr. Morris, is employed to protect the house at all hours of the day and night. And what is it he protects you from, Mrs. Northcote? Is it from the wild dogs, for whom you leave out plates of raw meat every night? Or is it from the wolf, a breed of animal that has been extinct in these parts of the country for centuries? 
I have nothing more to say to you, sir. Did this same creature come for my son, Mrs. Northcott? Did he come to that room where I found my son's Bible at the side of my bed? Good night, Mr. Deacon. Come, Sybil! Did it come for my son as it came for me, Mrs. Northcott? For if none of you are willing to tell me the truth, then I swear to you, in God's name, I'll find someone who will. Man into animal. It is a theory that has plagued men of learning for centuries, Mr. Deacon. After all, what is man but an animal? He has paused to walk on his own sense of direction. He lies, cheats, hunts for his food without conscience. And all for one purpose, to survive. Think of the monkey, the baboon, the gorilla. All of them had great ancestors. And yet as we mock at them through the bars of their man-made cage, are we really to believe that we have progressed into the superior beings we are today? No, sir. We are superior only in objective, not in development. Even Mr. Darwin made that abundantly clear in his recent thesis on evolution. Man into animal. Are you offering that as serious scientific theory, Professor Forrester? Well, suppose you tell me what you think it was that tried to break into your room last night. You're... you're trying to tell me that it was some kind of half-human animal? The Fenlands have always suffered their share of superstitions, but none more strange or difficult to understand than that of the werewolf. Werewolf? Werewolf here in the middle of the English countryside? Oh, we scientists have invented a respectable word for the study, you know. Lycanthropy. The transformation of man into wolf creature. As you can see by my collection of books here, I've been absorbed in the subject since my student days in anthropology at Cambridge. Now, look, even I know that the origins of lycanthropy are found in the myths and legends of all European folklore. But what you're asking me to believe is that there actually exists a living human being that is capable of physically transforming itself into a, into a wolf. Even scientists have to accept that there are some phenomena which simply defy the laws of nature. I'll show you what I mean on this wall sketch. Oh, now, is that anything like the creature you saw last night? My God, my God, it's, it's incredible. This is no myth or legend, my friend. It's a composite drawing taken from the descriptions of those who have actually seen the wolf creature. It's not a man, and yet it's no animal. If I hadn't seen it with my own eyes, it has the skin and hair of an animal, but those eyes, it has such a wild look in its eyes. A creature whose natural strength is more than quadrupled during the period of transformation. It defies all known scientific laws. Professor, do you believe in life after death? That's an odd question. <laughs> I, I, I don't know, don't, 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 really. But I suppose if you believe in God, then you ought to believe that uh, life doesn't end with death. Why do you ask? Well, I was just thinking there must be an awful lot of people who have a need to make contact with the life hereafter. I mean, either through grief or as a way of using the dead as a weapon against the living. Witchcraft? Witchcraft, black magic, satanic ritual, call it what you will. But believe me, I, I have seen the effects that all of this can have on the human mind. Ordinary men and women tearing themselves apart because they are indulging in things that they do not understand. You think some kind of bestial witchcraft has been used to create a phenomena like the werewolf? Man cannot create his own image. Only God can do that. But devil worship can create a madness that will make you deny the existence of your own soul. You know, I, I once met a Red Indian witch doctor who claimed that he was able to make contact with the devil merely by staring up at the moon all night. The moon? Stare long enough at a full moon and you can almost hear it. A voice calling in the night. Mr. Deacon, I think you should know the wolf creature is seen only during the hours of a full moon. Professor, 
When was the existence of this creature first established? Uh, there are documents in the village church which suggest that the first victim was struck down on the marshes uh, during the time John Northcote was building the manor house. Uh, that was back in the uh, early part of the 16th century. How much do we know about the first John Northcote? I mean, what kind of a man was he? Oh, quite a tyrant of his day. The villagers are convinced it was Northcote himself who was cursed into a wolf creature by a band of travelling gypsies who had a grudge against him. Uh, we can't prove that, of course. No. But if it were true, if Northcote had somehow been transformed from man into the wolf creature, then it wouldn't be without logic to think of the condition as hereditary. Hereditary? Well, why not? It wouldn't be the first time a disease has been passed down from one generation to another, would it? I mean, think of hemophilia, for instance, or any other disease of the blood. Well, it would certainly tie up with what we know about the family's history of ill fortune. Then would it mean that there is a werewolf amongst the present generation of Northcotts? Well, why else are they so afraid to tell me what has happened to my son? Mr. Deacon, Matthew, do you still believe that your son is alive? Daniel, until last night, I still hoped. But after everything that's happened, I, I find it hard to believe that I'll ever see Robert again. But I'll not sleep at night until I know how or why Dorothy Norcott took the boy to that godforsaken house. Until I know why his life had to be sacrificed for something that is just too evil to even think about. Daniel, will you help me? Ever seen one of these, Matthew? Over here, in the glass cabinet. What is it? Take a closer look. A, a pistol bullet? I've been keeping it under this cover for years. It was specially made for me by an eminent London gunsmith. It is of pure silver. Well, what do you need a silver bullet for? Legend tells us that only silver will penetrate the heart of a werewolf. Oh, no. Daniel, no, no. Leave it to God. God can never rid us of a monster that has terrorized us in our dreams, Matthew. One shot. One carefully aimed shot is the only chance we have. But I will not fail you, Matthew. I will not fail you or your son. For with God's help, this bullet will end a legend that has to die. It's Maggie Foster's funeral, God rest her soul. There she goes, down into the grave where she buried her own daughter no more than a month ago. Grief was too much for her. Her daughter? The child was 15, Matthew. They found her body out there on the marshes. By the time the wolf had finished with her, there was hardly anything left to put inside the coffin. Are you telling me this creature feeds on human flesh? Look around you, Matthew, here in this very graveyard. There's hardly a tombstone that has not been removed, a grave that has not been pillaged. The werewolf hunts not only amongst the living for its food. Daniel, over there, look. Where? Oh, over there, behind those trees. Can't you see him? It's Nicholas Northcote. Northcote? Yes. Where? He's gone. He's not there anymore. <laughs> My dear fellow, you must have been mistaken. The Northcotts had never seen in the village, especially at the funeral of an old peasant woman. But he was there, Daniel. I swear to you, he was there. He had such a strange look on his face. A look of pain. Why, Daniel? Why? Well, here it is, Matthew. This is our parish church. It dates well back to the early part of the 14th century. Generations of Northcotts are buried in these walls. Why is it so... so cold? Have you ever known a church that isn't cold? Oh, no, that's not what I mean. I've never been inside a house of God that's so... unfriendly. You can feel it the moment you walk through that door. Yes, 
Nothing ornate about the stonework. No statues, no, no paintings, no expression of love. Oh, I think you're being a little unfair, old chap. You have to admit there's some rather lovely stained glass up there. Mostly medieval, you know. Yes, and yet, Daniel, that window up there, what is it? Above the altar, you mean? Mm. Uh, 16th century. Yes. Beautiful, isn't it? It's St. George fighting the devil beast. The devil beast? A half man, half wolf, a werewolf? Come over here, Matthew. I want to show you something. Ah, this side of the church is known as the Devil's Walk. To Christians in former ages, it was referred to as the province of Satan. You have to stoop down to see the mask. It's buried in the wall. The mask? It's the death mask of John Northwood. Uh, how did he die, Daniel? How did all these Northcots die? buried with their secrets into the walls. Did the wolf creature claim all their lives? Who knows? But if a transformation from man into animal is passed down from one generation to the next, it's more likely to manifest itself in a male member of the family. Mm. Matthew, what are you staring at? Is anything wrong? In the wall. Look, there's something been scratched on the wall huh? at the side of the Northcote's tomb. Where? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes, sir, it has. Looks as though it's in Latin. Satanus est. Satan lives. What could it mean? <laughs> that girl. That girl, she's here. Girl? What girl, Matthew? She's here again. Can't you hear her? Well, you must hear her, Daniel. You must. I can't hear her. <laughs> and that... That smell of perfume, it's... It's her perfume. <laughs> Now listen to me. Up there. Up there, the window above the altar. Oh, they're here, Daniel. Can't you hear them? Can't you feel the pressure? It's, it's all around us. I can't get out of here. I can't breathe. I can't. I can't breathe. Churchyard, from the village, or from any place where a Northcote is not welcome. Why did you go to the funeral? It's none of your business. You always treat me like a child. Why must I be locked up here like a prisoner in my own home? Because you tell lies, Nicholas. Because, like a child, you cannot tell the truth. Why did you leave the house during the night? Where did you go, sir? If you must know, I went to the lake. You stupid, you, you foolish boy. Don't, don't you realize what you could have done? Oh, oh, but it was exhilarating, Grandmama. I was free. I was alone. I took up my clothes and bathed in the ice-cold waters of the lake. But I didn't feel the cold. Oh, no. To me, it was, it was like a hot summer's day. I could feel the warm glow of the moon on my body. It gave me strength. What have you got there? Where did you get that knife? Why? From the kitchen, Grandmama. You've seen it before, haven't you? It's very sharp. I made quite sure of that. Look, I'll show you. Nicholas, blood. My blood is your blood, Grandmama. It's always been like that, hasn't it? But now, I'm strong. And you're weak. I'm not afraid, Nicholas. Do you understand? I am not afraid. <laughs> Drop the knife. Did you hear what I said? Drop it! Oh. Kneel, Nicholas. Now, take the Bible oh. in your hand. No! No, please don't make me, Grandmama, please! Do as I say. 
Kiss the Bible, Nicholas. Oh, I can't. My hands, look at my hands. They're shaking. I, I can't do it. Kiss the Bible, oh. my dear. It's the only way. You know it is. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, we repent our sins. <laughs> The wolf creature? Aye, I've seen it all right. Just thinking about it keeps me awake at night. Well, it's not myself I care about, you understand, sir. But if anything should happen to my Jesse here... Yeah. Well, I ain't scared of no wolf. If we bolt up good at night, I don't see how no harm can come to us. Mr. Morris, how long have you been working here for the Northcotts? Ever since old Mr. James gave me the job as gamekeeper. These fields used to be full of barley in the old days. I was always out shooting hare, but not no more. Oh, why is that? Because there ain't nothing to shoot at, that's why. Except dogs and the creature. I'm always thankful for the rain. It, uh, it makes us feel safe. Sometimes it's so quiet out there. No birds, no breeze. Just a feeling you're being watched. And I hate the moon. Mrs. Morris, do you think your husband would tell me about the night he, he saw the wolf creature? No, sir. Oh, don't ask him. Please, I beg of it's you. It's a time in my life I, I'm doing my best to forget, oh, sir. please, please, Mr. Morris, try to understand. It's terribly important for me to know. Please. Well, it were years ago. Must have been winter. Because I remember the hoar frost on the trees. I was down by the lake, fixing up my gin traps for the night. It were already dark, and the mist was coming down thick. I started to make my way back toward the cottage. Who's that? Who's out there? Who's there? But only when the moon suddenly cut through the mist that I saw her standing there, on the path, right in front of me. Miss Dorothy? Oh, she was always one of the most beautiful children I ever saw. Flaming red hair down to her shoulders, but eyes that stared right through you. Good evening, Mr. Morris. Miss Dorothy, what are you doing out here on your own at this hour of night? Ought to be tucked up in your bed a long time ago. I've been for a walk all alone. What will your mother have to say about that, may I ask? I saw my father. He talked to me. Oh, don't say things like that, Miss Dorothy. Your father's been passed on a long time, you know he has. Why, I doubt you could even remember what he looks like. Oh, but I do. He has red hair, just like me. He's very old, much older than Grandmama. A long time ago, he built our house. Did you know that? What's that? Yeah, there's something in the bushes over there. You mustn't be afraid, Mr. Morris. I'm not afraid. <laughs> Miss Dorothy? Miss Dorothy! Well, come back here, Miss Dorothy. Miss Dor oh. oh, God! Uh, help me! Oh, oh Jesus! Uh, help me! Came me from nowhere. Eyes glaring out of the dark like emeralds. Teeth like rocks. Tarnished with the blood of human flesh. And hair streaming out of his neck and hands and feet, the sight of which would freeze the blood of any man. Dad, Dad, it's all right, Dad. It's all right. I just ran and ran as fast as I could. I still don't know how I got away, but... But... This isn't one of God's creatures, sir. It's the work of the devil himself. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Morris. I, I know how difficult that must have been for you. Please, now, 
tell me all you know about my son and Dorothy Northcott. They used to go to the lake. Always to the lake. Yes, go on. Well, it was just him and her. They used to sit there for hours, staring at their own reflection in the water, as though they had no need for words. But never till the sun went down. Even when she was a child, she could never bear the sun on her precious skin. It stopped raining. Oh, please, please, Mr. Deacon. Look, you ought to be going now. It wouldn't be wise to stay out after dark. Mr. Morse, if you want these marshlands to be a safe place for you and your wife to live in, if you want to be able to breathe God's fresh air without the constant fear of things unknown, then you must tell me what has happened to my son. Is he alive? Or is he dead? Matthew, if the police knew we were desecrating a private grave in the middle of the Daniel, night... Daniel, Daniel, you don't imagine I like the idea myself, do you? But if what Morris told me is true, if the Northcots have buried Robert here... Uh, if Robert is here, then what's the use of exhuming his body? It'll only bring you torment for the rest of your life. No, no, you're wrong, Daniel. If the boy is here, then at least I'll know that my search has come to an end. All I can do then is to leave him to rest in peace. Peace? What peace is there for any man when he's not safe, even in his own grave? You know, Daniel, the only thing I regret is that I, I never did enough for that boy of mine. I paid for his education, his food, his clothes. But perhaps when he needed me most, I... Oh, the judge was just too busy listening to other people's problems. He forgot that he had some of his own. It's a full moon again tonight. The light is picking out the gravestones all around us. It's... Even the dogs are quiet. Daniel, we're there. I've hit the top of the coffin. Oh, dear God, what have we done? Quick, give me the lamp. Yes, it's just as I thought. No nameplate. Matthew, what are you doing now? I'm going to force, or try and force the lid open if I can just get the tip of the shovel in far enough. Hurry, Matthew, hurry. Yes, it's, it's coming, it's coming. Matthew! Uh, the wolf! Can't you hear it? Uh, it's scraping into the grave somewhere. That smell. Matthew! Oh, we've, we've, we've got to get away from here. The wolf, Matthew! What is the wolf! What is that smell? Perfume. Oh. oh! It isn't Robert. This is not my son. Who is it, Daniel? Who, who is it? It's her, Matthew. It's Dorothy Northcott. Or what the wolf has left of her. No, I don't believe you. I refuse to believe. Why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you tell me that your own granddaughter was buried in that coffin with barely enough flesh left on her bones to feed the worms? Sacrilege. You've committed sacrilege, Mr. Deacon, and God will punish you. But he has punished me, Mrs. Northcott. He's punished all of us. Look at this house, everything about it. Where is God's light? Where is the pure air he gave us to breathe? Why do the dead thrive here and not the living? I did not ask you to come to this house, Mr. Deacon. You came of your own accord. How long has she been dead, Mrs. Northcott? Was my son with her when the wolf attacked? Stop this. Stop it, I say. Mrs. Northcott, I want to know. Mr. Deacon, may I remind you that I am not obliged to answer your questions. This is not a court of law. I do not stand accused before you. Where is my son? What dark, nameless pit have you thrown his remains into? Your son is dead, sir. Are you not man enough to accept the truth? If he is dead, ma'am, then it's not only truth I'm looking for, but justice. Justice? There's never any justice in this world, only sacrifice. And I have sacrificed a great deal in my lifetime, both as a wife and a mother. And as long as I live, I shall 
never be anything more than a prisoner in this house. Mrs. Northcote, I don't know what happened between your granddaughter and my son, but somehow they seem to have created some kind of bond that, well, that I don't even pretend to understand. But from what I've felt since I came into this house, I can only believe that their relationship was a manifestation of the devil himself. The devil? What is the devil, Mr. Deacon? Is it some kind of a demon with horns on its head and a pointed tail? Or is it that creature out there which haunts our lives every night of the full moon? Or do you believe, as I do, that the devil is a corruption of our souls? Invasion of our hopes. How many years have I lived in this house without peace? How many years have I had to stand aside and watch those marshes out there claim all that I love most? My husband, my son, and even my own granddaughter. Each night I ask the Almighty to end my suffering. And each night it is only he who gives me the strength to go on. For that, Mr. Deacon, is what I must do. As long as I live, I will resist this devil. I will resist it until the curse that has plagued my family throughout its long history is broken. Forever. Mrs. Northcote, the moment I came into this house, I... I knew it was dominated by the spirit of hate. Hate not just for you and all your family, but for all the things that are good and real. It's like a voice that never leaves you, a voice that tries to claw its way into your brain and urges you to follow. What is it that calls to us in the night? Satan lives? Yes, he, he does live, but only if we let him, only if we let him crawl into the dark, weak shadows of our mind. Only God is our creator, Mrs. Northcote. The power of God is greater than any manifestation of evil and corruption and temptation. We don't even have to go to church to know that. Nothing will ever convince me that faith can't destroy evil in whatever form it takes. It, it was faith that brought me to this house, man. You asked me why I'm not man enough to accept the fact that my son is dead. Well, maybe I'm not. But if I really am never again to see my boy alive, then I beg you, do not deny me the right to restore his soul. Oh, there! Yeah. Oh, no! Well, this is it, Matthew, Northcote Lake. It's beautiful, isn't it? That small island out there in the middle of the lake, Daniel. What's it used for? The island? Mm. <laughs> it's good for a wild duck shoot, nothing more. Uh, there's an old hunting lodge out there. It hasn't been used for years. Daniel. Daniel, I am sure that Robert is out there. Robert is out there on that island, and he is alive. How do you know that? I am convinced he's been hiding out there ever since the night Dorothy Northcutt was attacked by the wolf. That boy is sick, Daniel. He needs my help. I've got to go to him. No, Matthew, wait. There is nothing you can do to help Robert. His suffering no man can cure. What are you talking about? The boy came to me for help, Matthew. It was soon after he arrived at the manor house. Robert... Robert came to see you, and you, and you never told me. I couldn't tell you, Matthew. I didn't know how. This is something you just had to find out for yourself. But from the first moment I saw that boy, I knew. It was in the eyes, Matthew. A wild look in his eyes. He was struggling against something that he just didn't have the strength to resist. Oh, my God. Daniel, do you know what you are saying? Evil can exist in the mind of one who is too weak to resist it. And my son may be weak, Daniel, but I'll, I'll never believe he could turn his back on God and allow the devil to take possession of his soul. The day your son met Dorothy Northcote, 
His soul was never to be his own again. I, I'd like to think you're wrong, but the only way I can prove it is to go out to that island. If you go out there, Matthew, it could be your own life that you're putting at risk. Well, then it's a risk I'll have to take. If the boy needs me, I'll have to go to him. And I must go out to that island, and I must go alone. Robert. Robert? Robert, are you in there? Oh, please, son, if you're in there, open the door. It's, it's locked. Wait a minute. It, it's bolted on the outside. Robert, are you in here, son? Please, boy, answer me. It's me. It's, it's your father. Robert, where are you, son? Please, Robert, listen to me. I know you're sick, but it's nothing to be ashamed of. I've come to take you back home, son, back to all the things you, you know and understand. Oh, don't do that. Don't close that door. There are no windows in here. I can't see a thing in the dark. Oh, that sound. Who's there? Who's there, Robert? Robert, is that you? Robert, where are you? There's, a, there's another room. Robert? Are you in there? Robert, why don't you answer me? Just let me talk to you, that's all I ask. I'm coming in, Robert. Papa. Robert. Oh, Robert, where are you, boy? I can't see in the dark. Oh, where... Over here, Papa, in the corner. Oh, Robert, Robert. No, no. please, please don't come any closer. I don't want you to see me like this. Stand back where I can see you. Yes. Where the light is shining through the boards of the uh, window. I, I had to see you, Papa. I had to see you just one more time. What are you doing here, boy? What's happened to you? Why are you locked up in a place like this with no light and no warmth? I, I wish I could tell you, Papa. But I can't. How long have you been here, son? I don't remember anything, Papa, not a thing. I, I, I just feel as though I'm fast asleep and haven't woken up yet. Everything, everything's so confused. Oh, Papa, there are so many things I have to tell you, and yet I, I don't even know if they even happened. Now you listen to me, son, listen to me carefully. I've come to take you away from this no! place. No, no, it's too late, Papa. I'll never leave the marshes again. I can't. Never let me go. What are you talking about, son? They? Who are you afraid of? Afraid? Yes, maybe I am afraid of something. But, but what? Is it my dreams, I wonder? I dream an awful lot. Did you know that, Papa? I, I dream of the marshes and the woods and the lake through the mist. And the moon. Always the moon. Oh, the night is such a part of me, Papa. It's always waiting for me. Out there. And yet... When I wake up, it's you I see, Papa. You and Mother and all the things I always thought were such a part of me. But what's happening to me, Papa? I don't understand who or what I am anymore. What are you doing? Hey, Papa, what are you doing? I'm there. You need some light in here, my boy. Only God's light will draw you out of the shadow. No, it's too late. Too late. No. My eyes. No. Take the sun away from my eyes. Oh, my God. Look at you. Look at your face. You're, you're just skin and bones. You've got to get away from here, Papa. Do you hear me? You've got to get away. No, no, son. I'll never leave you alone. Never again. You don't. You don't understand, Papa. The sun. Once that sun goes down. Matthew! What? 
Maxwell, are you all right? There's someone out there. What have you done to me, Papa? Have you betrayed me? Now you listen to me, son. I, I beg you to listen to me. God can make you well again, Robert. I promise you. All I ask you to do is to come with me to the church. No. No. Look, look, I, I've brought this for you. It's your Bible, son. Do you remember? I, I gave it to you when you were a little boy. No. No, keep it away from me. Keep it away. Please, please, let's pray together, Robert, like we used to when we were all together as a family, you and me and your mother. Matthew! It's too late, Papa. The past is over. It doesn't exist anymore. It's too late. The church, Robert. Go to the church. You're a fool. Don't you realize what you've done? By setting that boy free, you've made the world unsafe for all of us. Nothing you have said has convinced me that the boy I saw out there on that island is capable of killing anything. But he has killed. He'll do so again. Don't you understand? On the first night you arrived here, it was your own son who tried to break into your room. Oh, no, no. Do you think I enjoyed locking him up every full moon? It was not just for our protection for his own. You had that boy caged up like an animal. No boats can contain the fury of the devil. You talk to me of the devil's fury. Well, let me tell you something. You need go no further than the village church to know what devil has thrived on the blood of its generations. The same devil that has urged your own grandson to the edge of madness. No. Do you think I haven't seen Nicholas out there in the mist at night, staring up at the moon, as though it was some kind of a voice calling to him from out the night. Nicholas was saved from damnation only by my sacrifice. God protected him through me. The devil created a monster in his own image from your family, Mrs. Northcote. Yes, but not Nicholas. It was through Dorothy. Can't you understand Your that? Your granddaughter is dead. She's dead. Oh, for Dorothy, there can be no salvation. The devil claimed her soul from the day she was born. There was nothing I could do to save her. What are you saying? Mr. Deacon, throughout the Northcote generations, it was impossible for the devil creature to reveal itself in the female line. In the women... The seed of evil could only remain dormant until the time when it could be passed on to the male sex. A husband, a son, or a lover. In, in order to save your grandson, you sacrificed my son. But don't you understand? Dorothy had no choice. She was compelled to pass it on. I don't believe you. And I will prove that my son is not this monster that has been created from your family. Then for your sake, I pray to God that you are proved right, sir. For it is only he who will forgive you if blood is shed this night. Mrs. Morris, open the door. Open up, I say. Mr. Nicholas, what is it, sir? What's wrong? Your husband, madam. Where is your husband? Why, sir, he's up watching the house. You know he's always watching the house this time of night. I've been searching for him for the last half hour. What? The house has been left completely unguarded, madam. I demand to know why. But I don't understand, sir. Ted left long ago, long before dusk. <gasps> the wolf creature. It's out there, isn't it? You've seen it, haven't you? My advice to you, madam, is to bolt your door and not to open it until your husband returns. But if he's out there, if something's happened to him... Just keep your door locked or I will not be responsible for the consequences. No! Mrs. Morris, where are you going? Come back here! If something's happened to him, i got to be with him! No! Don't be a fool, woman. Don't go out to those marshes on your own. Come back, do you hear? Come back! Where are 
are you? What's that? Who, who's there? Ted? Ted, is that you? What's, what's going on? Jesse Morris was attacked by the wolf creature last night. They found the remains of a body in marshland down by the oh lake. Oh, my God. The villagers are organizing a search party. <laughs> they didn't realize their shotguns are quite useless against the creature. We've got to get to the boy before they do. No harm can come to him until the sun goes down. There's nothing you can do to save Robert now. Oh, but there is, Daniel. There is. Don't you see... I must give him a chance to live again. I can't allow the devil to take him away from me. He has taken him from you, Matthew. Robert is already stained with blood. You must let the law take its course. No. No, this is something that's beyond the law of men. Only God can help Robert now. Only God. Robert! Robert, can you hear me? Robert! Robert, where are you? Uh, you're uh, wasting your time, Matthew. We haven't a hope of catching up with the boy. Oh, Daniel, he's out there somewhere. The boy needs me. If only I'd known that all these years. If only I'd known. Sun's almost down. Lake's beginning to look like fire. Yes. Thank God it's the last night of a full moon. We haven't much time. You know that, don't you, Matthew? Oh, Daniel, what am I to do? Do I go away from here and leave that boy to wander these marshes in damnation until the end of his days? How can I tell my son that I... that I love him? If you really loved your son, Matthew... You would know what to do. The silver bullet. You'd use that on my son? It's the only way, Matthew. And it may be your way, Daniel, but it's not the way of God. God cannot help your son now. How do we know if we don't give him a chance? If the devil has taken possession of my son, then it is a challenge I must face up to. We must give him back his soul, his soul. Oh, there's a search party. They're on the other side of the lake. Matthew, where are you going? I know where to find Robert. I should have known... Now, please, Matthew, let me get the search party. No. I'm going to do this my way, Daniel, not yours. Then at least take the pistol. No. Don't be a fool, man. If you must risk your own life, then at least try to protect yourself. Why? 
Why are men so afraid to give God the chance to solve the things they cannot understand? Robert? Robert, are you... Are you here, son? Robert, where are you, boy? Papa? Robert. Oh, son, I knew you'd be here. I knew you'd wait for me here in the church. Look at me, son. We've no time to lose. Last night you killed someone. Now you must understand that. And those dreams, you remember those dreams you told me about the nightmares? Well, somewhere in the dark shadows of your mind, something is telling you to kill, Robert. To kill for the sake of killing. And that's wrong, isn't it? Now, isn't it, boy? We both know it's wrong because that's what I've always tried to teach you, what God has always tried to teach us all. You have to resist evil, Robert. You have to resist it in every way you know how. No, no, don't, don't turn away. Look at me. Look at me, son, and listen. From now on, you must allow only my words to enter those shadows. Do you understand? Do you understand that, Robert? Evil can only possess one part of your mind, not all of it. Rid yourself of this, this tormentor. Let in God's light and truth and your own understanding of what you've done. Dorothy! What? What, what, are, you, what are you trying to say? Dorothy! Dor no, Dorothy! No, Robert, 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 Dorothy is not here. Now don't listen to her. She doesn't exist. Fight her, son. Fight her! Just fight her! Dorothy! No, don't move away from me, Robert. Look, here. Here, it's, it's your Bible. No. I've brought it so that we can pray together like we used to. No! There's nothing to be afraid of, Robert. Not here, not in God's house. No, no don't turn away. Don't look at that window. The devil beast is in that window. It's only you and me now, son, you and me. Dorothy! Oh, that smell, that perfume. Now hold on to me, Robert. Do as I say. Take hold of my hands. They're like ice. My hands, Robert. You're hurting them. My hands, Robert. You're, you're breaking my hands. Dorothy! Oh, yes. No. I hear you. Oh, no, Robert. Don't look up at that stained glass. Don't look up at that devil's window. The moon. The moon. It's lighting up the whole church. Get out of the moonlight, Robert. Keep away from the shadow of that window. It's the devil, Robert. The shadow of the devil creature. Oh, my soul, Dorothy. Your creation. No, no Robert, resist, resist the devil. Don't look at the moon. Resist them. Resist them, Robert. You're not an animal. You're one of God's creatures. Robert, Robert, where are you? Oh, oh no, oh no, Robert, no! Robert, listen to me, listen carefully. They can't take you from me. Do you understand what I'm saying? They, they can't take you. No one can take you away from God, Robert. Only he is your creator. Can you understand that, Robert, can you? This is your Bible, Robert. Can you see it? I'm holding it out for you. I'm going to pray for you, son. I'm, I'm, I'm going to pray for both of us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Oh, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, I command thee, Satan, be gone. Daniel, no! Oh. Oh. <laughs> Dear God in heaven!
heaven, what have you done? What have you done? Forgive me, Matthew. It was the only way. No. No, it was only your way. The way of men and their laws. But there is a higher law. A law that men will never understand. You had no need to shoot. My prayers were answered. His soul has been restored to him. It was my bullet that saved your life. I wonder. Matthew. Look. The transformation. It's beginning to reverse. Look at the eyes and the hair. The whole physical structure of the wolf is changing back to its human form. Robert. Robert. My son. Somewhere in the dark shadows of his mind, he heard me. He heard the words of the Lord. And he understood. Vincent Price played Matthew Deacon and Coral Brown, Mrs. Northcote, in Night of the Wolf by Victor Pemberton. <laughs>